final round. Fight! Is that kissing or is that fighting? I don't know. Anyway, hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and here we go again. Two Galaxy S22 Ultras, which are otherwise identical, well, except for the color. I've got Phantom Black and also this very tasty Burgundy, which I think is my favorite color, but also with completely different SOCs. And historically, the Qualcomm Snapdragons have always been better, although Samsung has been closing the gap recently. So how does the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 stack up to the Exynos 2200? Well, before we even get to the performance and the battery and the camera comparisons, there is one big difference that you guys need to know about, and that is in the camera app. Because if you go to portrait mode, you can see the Snapdragon uses feet and the Exynos uses meters. I would love it if that was the biggest difference, because the whole point is we want these to be the same. We want parity, not one to be better than the other. On a more serious note, one difference between them physically, actually, is if we pop out the SIM card trays, you can see the Snapdragon only has room for one physical nano SIM plus support for eSIMs, while the Exynos has room for two nano SIMs and also an eSIM. Now, because I live in the middle of absolutely nowhere, I haven't yet been able to test if the uh, Snapdragon US version works on 5G networks here in the UK, but in the past they haven't, and I don't believe it does still now. Although I would recommend putting it into global network mode, and actually one suggestion from a lot of people is to import from, say, Hong Kong rather than the US, as that's more likely to work on our 5G spectrum. Okay, let's get to the fun bit. Which one of these is faster? Well, these are the specs, and you can see the breakdown of the different chips. Also, both models here have 12 gigs of RAM and 256 storage, and I've also set them both to the maximum 8 gigs of RAM plus. Also, we are running the latest March software on both, which actually did include quite a few fixes. So kicking things off in the Antutu benchmark, we're looking at a very modest 3.5% boost on the Snapdragon, although actually you can see it's the GPU with that 11% higher score that's having the biggest impact. However, the Snapdragon did get a little bit hotter and also used slightly more battery. Next up in Geekbench 5, and the Snapdragon is 6% faster in single core, but actually 3% slower in multi-core, so it's fairly even. But then, in 3D Mark, the 20-minute wildlife extreme stress test, the Snapdragon has a solid 14% higher peak score, although they do share similarly low scores, and actually the Exynos has a slightly higher stability score. So it looks like the CPUs are pretty similar, although there does seem to be a bit of a boost for the GPU on the Snapdragon variant, possibly though at the cost of more throttling, at least in that 3D Mark test. But how does all this translate to games? Well, if we fire up a bit of Genshin Impact and with everything maxed out, actually neither phone could hit a stable 60 FPS consistently. In fact, as a side note, only the Red Magic 7 that I recently tested with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and crucially an active cooling fan could keep that throttling at bay and then play it flawlessly. Anyway, as you can see, both phones are dropping frames, but the Snapdragon was noticeably smoother for the first five minutes or so until it started to heat up, and then I saw the frame rate drop. Whereas I saw the Exynos start to dip almost immediately, and then I don't think I ever saw it hit the 60 FPS mark again. Now, thanks to this GameBench Pro tool, after 10 minutes of gaming, the median FPS was 50 on the Snapdragon versus 46 on the Exynos. And also you can see on the Snapdragon's frame rate graph that it does sustain a higher FPS for longer than the Exynos. The other problem with the Exynos is that in quite a few games, actually, it seems we're not seeing the same graphics and even frame rate options that we do on the Snapdragon version. Here in PUBG, for example, anything above HD is not available or just coming soon. Whereas on the Snapdragon, I can do HDR, I can have the Ultra HD textures, which I've got downloading here, and the frame rate can hit 60 FPS versus just 30 on the Exynos. So not only is the Snapdragon faster by around 10% or so, but in those games at least, I'm sure many others, we're getting better support, mainly because Snapdragon and Qualcomm chips are so much more ubiquitous and common developers are gonna optimize you know, their games and apps for that before the Exynos variant. So I'm sure that will change and improve with time, but who knows when? And so right now, despite all the hype around Radeon DNA and the new Exynos graphics, the Snapdragon is a better choice for gaming. But I think even more important than that is battery life. And actually, I remember in the past with the Exynos 990 on the S20 and the Note 20, we saw a good sort of 10% longer battery on the Snapdragon version over the Exynos, which 
was a bit unforgivable, really. Well, the good news is that these two are almost exactly the same. I would even say any difference between them is within the margin of error. And in fact, I found they both left me with about 35% by 11 p.m. after a full day of use. So while a point goes to the Snapdragon for performance, when it comes to battery life, I'm very happy to say that they are pretty much the same. Okay, let's talk about these cameras. And before I tell you which is which, can you see much difference and do you prefer one over the other? Well, going back to the portrait shot of me and the Exynos is on the left, Snapdragon on the right. And actually, if we zoom in, the Snapdragon is noticeably more detailed. The texture on my face and also my skin tone is a little bit oversaturated on the Exynos. So I spent most of yesterday staring at these photos side by side to pick out any significant differences. And while they are both very, very good, there are a few patterns. Generally speaking, and to my eye, the Snapdragon's shots are a little bit sharper and more detailed, and at the same time gives us slightly better noise reduction. If you really zoom in on the Exynos, you can see it's quite grainy and noisy in comparison. The Snapdragon's dynamic range also seems to perform a little bit better. You can see the difference here with the bulb and the lampshade. Although the Exynos does tend toward lighter shadows and contrast, so we do get more information and we see more in darker areas. And actually it can overall result in a brighter looking shot. But what about low light and nighttime shots though? This is usually where we see the biggest difference. Well, see what you think. And firstly, here in my living room as I'm watching some TV, there is a big difference in color. And if we zoom in, again, you can see we've got better noise reduction on the Snapdragon, although we do lose a tiny bit of detail in the process. Now, to be honest with you, quite often there's really not much between them. It does seem to mainly come down to the Exynos being a little bit warmer, a touch more saturated, and a bit noisier. Then up front with the selfie camera, and it is a similar story, with the Exynos being a touch brighter versus the slightly more heavier contrast on the Snapdragon, but which one do you prefer? All right, welcome to the studio, which is a bit of a mess. I've made no effort to clean things up, as you can see. Um, but this is being shot at 4K 30 on the rear cameras on both. And let's see if there's much difference. This is my yellow sofa, and I can see a slight difference in color. It's a little bit more saturated, a little bit more orangey, perhaps, on the Exynos. I'm not sure what you guys think. In fact, let me show you this. This is my very fancy table. It's from a company called Cityfus. Interesting. All right, let's back up a little bit. So we've got the setup over here right now. I have my LG 38 inch ultra wide and the new Apple Studio display. Interesting. I mean, they are very close. It's subtle differences, slight vibrancy and saturation differences, a little bit in the dynamic range, but it's a pretty tough call. What do you guys think, Doc and Marty? Although the Snapdragon is noticeably brighter in super dark conditions, but at the expense of a lot more noise. And actually, in a reversal of what we saw in good light at nighttime or in really tricky conditions like this, the Snapdragon is actually smoother and less shaky. Look at this though, you can really see the Exynos's noise reduction kicking in here. It does seem to introduce a little bit of wobble and artifacting, but it is significantly less noisy than the Snapdragon. So it seems for photography, the Snapdragon is less noisy, but for video, it's the Exynos. But what about front facing video and also the microphone? So this is being recorded at 4K on both side by side. And if I a little spin around, change the lighting. In fact, oh, look at that. Let's uh, put some direct sunlight on my face, see how it handles that. Super bright light. You guys are gonna have to tell me how this looks in the comments. It's uh, tricky for me to see. There is a difference. It just goes to show how much uh, difference the processing uh, with the ISP on the chip can make because really this is the same camera hardware. Hmm. Clear as mud then, right? Well, when it comes to photography and the cameras, I think overall I am slightly leaning towards preferring the Snapdragon, but they both have their pros and cons, and I don't think there's a drastic difference between them. Certainly not enough for you to say, I don't want the Exynos and you know actually have to import this just for the better camera. But as I'm lucky enough to have them both here, when it comes to the camera, 
I would probably take the Qualcomm Snapdragon. Uh, and also, of course, in terms of performance, it did uh, perform better in games, although, as I say, in terms of battery life, neck and neck. But the thing is, for most of us, this is all a bit moot because unless you're willing to ship a phone internationally and then deal with warranty and maybe even networking issues, you are a bit stuck with the one you get in your country. As I said at the beginning, what we want is parity. We want them to be as close to each other as possible. Now, I do have to just give the win to the Snapdragon version. I think the difference between them is fairly insignificant to most people, unless you're a hardcore gamer. So for me, I think I'm gonna carry on using the Qualcomm version, even though I don't think I'll actually be able to get 5G with this here in the UK, but honestly, I'm not losing much sleep over that. What is interesting though, is Samsung's new Galaxy A33 and A53 phones, which I recently had a play with, are exclusively shipping with Exynos chips, the 1280. There is no Snapdragon variant. And so I wonder if Samsung's end goal here is to do everything in house and save money and eventually push Qualcomm out. But that's not gonna happen anytime soon, and I have no doubt I will be here next year doing the same thing with the S23s as well. So if you did enjoy the video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated, and I'll see you next year for that one. But also let me know what you make of this, if you think that's a significant difference, and especially with the camera, did you prefer the Snapdragon or the Exynos? Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.